the New Zealand Rugby Union Board has decided to maintain the current 14-team competition and the 12-team Heartland Championship in the same formats as the 2009 season. The board is quoted as wanting to give teams, players and fans surety for the 2010 competition. Several unions had lodged appeals with legal action, and with pressure from the collective employment negotiations from the players' union, this all meant the review will now only continue for the 2011 and 2012 seasons. Prior to the board's decision, the New Zealand Herald had interviewed key stakeholders about the proposed changes to the NPC. You don't run a business to lose money, and the New Zealand Rugby Union are losing squillions of dollars. So they've got to do some hard calls. So you take the emotive side out of it, and purely as a business sense, yeah, I understand the New Zealand rugby reasoning that some unions have to get dropped because we just can't sustain another $3 million a year. This competition isn't working. Why? We've got too many paid players. Only way you can get rid of that, drop the salary cap, drop it again by half, don't give them any money, or, you know, um, you drop teams. And they're looking for teams. And we've had a number of meetings with provincial unions where we've gone through uh, options. We don't get a unanimous view either because we've got 14 very different uh, sets of interest groups. Um, but, you know, but, but ultimately, um, there are still seven unions projecting a financial loss this year. Uh, over the last three seasons, the 14 unions will have collectively have lost $10 million. Uh, we're ourselves eating into our reserves. Um, we, we believe that this change is necessary. There's an element of sympathy for them which then kind of fades out quite quickly when you realise that all the advice they were given in 2006 was to have no more than 12 teams. So they're between a rock and a hard place because they put themselves there. Well, if you go back to the very beginning, you know, we had a, a fresh set of directors come on board at the end of 2002. Um, they, independently of each other, all identified uh, a, a review of our domestic competitions as an important priority. They all wanted to do some work, if you like, in that space as, as part of their, their term um, in the administration. And we kicked off a competitions review that uh, has pretty much gone on ever since, unfortunately. And we think that's important now, actually, is to get some certainty. So make the decision, put it in place, and then we, well, we operate on that foundation for a, for a period of time. You know, there was a, there were, I guess the concern was that the competition was un unbalanced, that you had a number of teams that, that were floundering at the bottom on a regular basis. You know, Northland hadn't won a game for two or three seasons. Um, the finals were dominated by the Canaries and the Aucklands and, and uh, Wellingtons and Waikato's of the world. Uh, and we've seen over the last two or three years, um, I guess, you know, two finals in a row, Wellington Canterbury, but we've seen Southland and Hawke's Bay and, and Bay of Plenty and Tasman. They've emerged as um, uh, having the ability to win and, and, uh, and push their position on the, on the table. Um, but uh, ultimately, um, what they've now decided is that they, they want a competition with, as I say, certain characteristics and to go through those uh, they want the, 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 the domestic competition not to overlap with, with Super Rugby which will finish in July from 2011 so it can't start till August which coincidentally gives us a protection for club rugby which we think is really important and often overlooked we want uh, a round, full round robin and a semi and a final we want the professional players fully engaged in the competition so they need to finish by the end of October. I think that they've got a situation where two or three years ago they put 14 teams in the New Zealand Cup and, and they convinced us that that was the right thing to do and it was going to broaden the base. And that's exactly what it's done. Counties are a wee bit off the pace, but they will come. It's broadened the base. Manawa too have got, um, and Hawke's Bay particularly. Now, Hawke's Bay used to be a sort of a feeder union, uh, mainly for Otago. A lot of guys went to Otago, partly to do with the varsity. <clears throat> but now... They've been going two or three years, and it's been long enough to start bringing the boys in, their local grown boys, who now don't have to go away. They see a pathway at home to play in New Zealand Cup. Yeah, Aaron Cruden, for example, these guys. They've just got it going, and the rugby union is worried about the last four years. What's the last four years got to do with everything? The last two or three of these guys, they've been progressing, they've been building. It's the next four years that we need to talk about. And the, the worrying thing is that if they dismantle that, all that good work that Manoa 2, Tasman's another one, Hawke's Bay, all that good work that they've done is out the window. I, I don't want to be seen to be beating the NZRU over the head all the time. And, and that's, but I do think we have got it wrong in so many places that we need to point it out. We need to 
stay true to what we believe. And, and, and I absolutely believe that the NPC has been successful not because the NZRFU are involved. In fact, the opposite. If they weren't involved at all, it would be equally or more successful because the NPC would make its own regulations, it would do its own things. There seems to be a real confusion because it seems like, OK, where can we fit the NPC in between all the internationals, the autumn internationals and the Super 14? Oh, there's a gap, we'll just throw it in there and hopefully everyone else is happy. Unfortunately, um, Steve Chu, it's, it's come back to bite him and these unions have every right to be um, not happy at his decision. You know, I mean, as, a, as the CEO, he's obviously making a, you know, making a decision for, for, to keep everyone happy. But sometimes you can't keep everyone happy. you just got to go with the best that's, that's available. I, it's, I'm pleased about the New Zealand Cup and what's happened there and the 14 teams surviving. I played the party line when I got back because I thought that was what was going to happen. I think that everybody agreed to some sort of criteria at the start of the season. And those people who agreed obviously were nagging on that. I know I'm not answering your question, but that was the agreement, and some people are obviously not going along with the agreement now. We think we have made uh, the right decision, and we've done it uh, for the right reasons, initiated uh, by the provincial unions themselves. Uh, they accept that we're never going to get agreement on what the competition should look like because there's just too many diverse interests. But we accept that the, the changes that we're, we're going to make uh, are going to hurt. I'm deadly serious when I believe that the NPC is, a, is an expression of the game in New Zealand and it's an expression of the provinces, tribalism if you want to call it that. Um, and that's what rugby has always been about. Um, you play with your mates and for your mates and you play for small communities, and that's why small communities have thrown up great teams in, in the past, and they've done extraordinary things, and it's great to see Southland get the Ranfurly Shield, for example. Those sorts of things are a, an expression of what, um, rag, what's good in rugby in this part of the world. And you can't then say, in a dangling mechanism, oh, maybe we'll dangle Southland out of this mix, or maybe it's, if Manawatu had ended up with the Shield and they get biffed out, or Northland, who nearly got it, what about, you know, what's that say? That those are not worthy? Now, they say money is a problem. Well, don't pay these guys so much. I mean, do we need to pay any Zorn Cup players? Uh, all the 14 teams that play in the New Zealand Cup are pro professional players. They, they get paid, OK? But then, you know, we're now, and of course we've got Super 40 in the All Blacks. So we have three professional competitions. The All Blacks, Super 14, that's sort of hand in hand, and the Air New Zealand Cup. Well, you know, the Air New Zealand Cup involves 14 teams. Gee, man, we were going to get the money for that. Do we really need to have a third competition? We've got 140, 150, what is it, 150 players that we're paying out there. Heck, and we're only four million tight times. I understand Super 14 and All Blacks. I just love to have that as the professional side, and anything down below that, or under that, or every all 27 unions. You know, we you're semi-professional, not fully professional. So sometimes you might have to go to work for a couple of days, or you might have to fit your training run around your work. And I tell you, what, that would take a serious, serious chunk of money out of your professional wage bill. They don't want to beat the rugby union up about this, and they're trying to administer it on behalf of the finances of it. But it's far more than finances, and, and finances tend to take care of themselves um, if they are made to um, cut their cloth in the way that they possibly can. And they've done that. These NPC sides have done that. And, you know, when you say that, I think the, the NZAU will say, oh, we've gone and bailed out this team, or we've bailed out that team, given them some money. That bailout process is not what they're looking for. What they're looking for is ways of being able to sustain their own environment. And it's got to be linked to the professional game because that's where all the money is. We've got to fit our NPC into 14, 12 weeks. When we've got 14 teams, we can't fit it in. Not a semi-final and a final. But then there are options. You can have midweek games. <laughs> you can have <laughs> two conferences of seven and still fit it in. You can have a full 14 number, but you've got to play midweek games. Whoa, then the Players Association, the Players Collective Group, well, they'd want more money for that. They've already done a great stitch job anyway, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to go around the table with Rob Nichols again.
Now, I'm sure that the players were involved in those negotiations uh, with the New Zealand Rugby Union, and that's great because they, um, they understand. They're, they're at the cold face. They're doing the job. They know what's required. Um, they know how much rugby they can play. This is about putting the game back on a, on a viable financial footing. Now, a lot of the money uh, has been because it was inexperienced in running the professional game, because there, were, uh, there was global pressure from external on players, so players' salaries had to go up over here to keep them here and all that kind of stuff. So inflation went through the roof. There were some poor decisions made around how much money you had to pay for players. So really, the biggest driver as to why the competition was failing financially was player expenditure. There was too much money being spent on players. We've seen that come right down. We're going to see a contracting model change, which is going to put the onus of payment over to the New Zealand Rugby Union rather than to the, to the provinces. So you just, you're changing the balance of where the money comes in. So you could end up, really, with a viable provincial competition. Now, that is the one and only reason, really, when we get down to it, why we're changing this. Because everyone has said it's broken. We cannot hemorrhage cash like this. So if you fix that problem, have you fixed provincial rugby? My argument is, well, yeah, you have the rest of it. It's just logistics. How do you then fit 14 teams into uh, a 10-week window or an 11-week window, whatever it's going to be? And then that's just a case of coming up with some compromise agreements. Presumably, why not play some games midweek? Why not um, stack your programme on a Saturday so you can do that? Now, it means that the broadcast money will probably come down a little bit to reflect that because you won't have a full live programme the way we've had in the past. It's how much people want to do it. If you take away a provincial team from Northland, from Manawatu, from Tasman, or wherever these areas are going to be, you're killing those regions. You're potentially denying yourself um, world-class players for whatever reason. Now, I don't understand this because the New Zealand Rugby Union is here to support and promote the game. Why would you kill it? Why would you take away the hope and opportunity from these regions? And the whole reason that we went to 14-team competition was because there was a problem with too many players gravitating towards the big five, the franchise base unions. So you ended up with a, with a disproportionate number of players in these regions. The competition was boring because we knew before it kicked off who the semi-final was most likely to be. So we've actually fixed all those problems and now we want to go back to, to where it was. And I think this is all because it's financially broken. It can be fixed financially and you're already fixing it. So don't break everything else. Let it run under a different financial model. That's all you need to do.